Well, it's Labour's most important conference for many years, but it's being totally overshadowed by the Hamas attacks on Israel. I'm delighted to say joining me in the studio is the government's independent advisor on anti-Semitism, Lord Mann. Lord Mann, uh, 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. This is the big, biggest security breach of Israel's borders in 50 years. First of all, how on earth did it happen? And where on earth is this going to end? Well, I mean, how did it happen? I'm sure heads will roll, but that's, that's something for the future. Sure. Um, uh, you know, who, who was asleep on the job, etc. But it did happen, and it's, it's the biggest single issue in this conflict in our lifetime. Um, that's how serious it is. And the brutality and the random brutality of what's happened. I think the, the fact that we're in the mobile phone era, People have gloried with the most horrific videos of themselves murdering and raping people. Um, any decent person would be shocked by that, horrified. And the view, I imagine if it happened to our country here, mm. uh, the country would have been riotous turmoil of wanting revenge. Yeah. Um, that's that revenge is dangerous, but. Uh, and there are including British citizens kidnapped, young children two, three, four year olds kidnapped this is beyond anything and you know, Hamas is a terrorist organisation sure. officially yeah. um, backed by, by Hezbollah the European Union, Britain, America uh, in law, Yeah. as is Hezbollah who've weighed in um, or tried to weigh in from the north from Lebanon um, and this is an attack on our values, in many ways an attack on us, it's an attack on democracy and it has to be resisted at every level and the one thing, the two things that have encouraged me in all this horror, the first is not surprising, there has been unity across the, uh, the political spectrum in the UK, Sure. the whole political spectrum, yeah. this isn't a question of argument. Um, and that's what I expected, but that's, I can report to you that is the case. Yeah. Um, I'd be horrified otherwise. The other, just a little snippet, fascinating. The protests at the Iranian football match. Significant numbers protesting when they put up the Palestinian flag. It's not the first time in Iran there have been workers' protests against uh, their support for uh, Hamas in the past, and big ones. But that broke out as well yesterday. And um, I think across the world, people are saying this is beyond anything in our comprehension. And what's going to be done about the hostages? Well, Massive problem for the world. This is it's medieval savagery. We agree on that. We know Iran is involved, and so America is sending warships to well, the region. Well, behind it. I mean, Iran is behind, behind it. it. And, 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 and funding it. Um, it has the potential to become, a, well, it's already a major flashpoint, Lord Man. but what can Britain, what can the United States, what can the United Nations do here? Well, they need to be working together. I think there are, there are a lot of forces. I mean, the timing of this, uh, I, I think the, without question, the fact that uh, the, there was going to be a Saudi-Israel uh, accord, um, I think peace deal might be overstretching what it was going to be, but an accord and a, a major change yeah. is a factor. And Iran would have wanted to destabilise that. It does want to destabilise that. So you've got the Saudis, you've got the Gulf states, Morocco as well, who've reached an accord with Israel in, in recent times. So that situation's very different. And the vast majority of the world and world leaders and world powers are aghast at this. So Hamas have isolated themselves but, I mean, Hamas have to be destroyed as an organisation, as an entity. When you say destroyed, do you mean militarily? Well, th that's going to happen, one way or other. Um, you know, Hamas do not represent anything other than war but they are in But they are in control in the Gaza. And, and, and these attacks from the Gaza have to stop. You know, these, we, we've kind of been a little blasé with rocket attacks repeatedly at civilians in Israel, and perhaps because the Israelis have got a very effective defence system and manage to intercept virtually every rocket, 
I think we've all become a little blasé. These attacks, random indiscriminate attacks on civilians by Hamas, have been a regular thing yeah. for many years. This simply takes it to a new and a barbarous level, and they're the most horrific. Israel is one of the most sophisticated military fighting machines, Lord Man, so they can surely target their response on, military, on, on the, the Hamas fighters uh, rather than on innocent civilians. Correct, and that's what would be appropriate, and that will be difficult, but the more effective, an effective response to this is not a randomised uh, response, it's a very precise response. And it's not to attack the Palestinian people, it's to take out Hamas and the Hamas leaders. And, you know, the, the, the Arab states can assist in this. The pressure to break Hamas has to be worldwide and has to incorporate key players in the Middle East. The hostages take, change everything in one sense, Lord Man, because they are grandmas, children. Uh, we saw the terrible scenes at the massacre at the, uh, at the rave. Uh, that is going to put enormous pressure on Western governments to do deals behind the scenes to get those hostages out. Should they do deals if necessary? Well, I, 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 look, we've got German, we've got American, we've yeah. got British hostages. Yeah. Other countries, including Asian countries as well, um, appear to have hostages. So this is a UN crisis. Um, I think that the, the big world powers will be all over this. Um, deals, no, not deals, release. Right. The release of these children and grandmothers um, and the release of them unharmed. Uh, you know, this is also an issue for the Palestinian Authority. I mean, what's the point of a Palestinian Authority? Where are they? If, 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 if they are not in the middle of sorting out the hostage crisis. You've been a veteran observer of the Middle East, what's been going on between Gaza and Hamas and, and Israel. I can tell from just talking, even you are shocked by what's happened this time. Oh, I mean, this is... Blood curdling. These are, these are people, these people have families. You know, they have relatives in the UK, some of them. You know, this is our problem as well as Israel's problem. And, you know, when two-year-old children are kidnapped, you know, that is not some kind of liberation force, you know, that is straightforward, brutal, terrorist murderers. Full stop. No argument, yeah. no discussion. And, and parading mutilated bodies for the benefit of social media. And, and, and that shows the depravity and collapse that Hamas has created. It's not a political organisation, it's a terror organisation in the way that is Islamic Jihad and Al-Qaeda and has to be treated as such. And the state of Iran, being opposed by its own people, rigging its elections to stay in power, mm. you know, the people of Iran are protesting and protesting at the moment against this. Um, you know, the, the, the Ayatollahs are the masterminds behind that. Well, Iran's part of the process. The world needs to turn its attention on Iran. How relieved are you, as, as uh, he were at the Labour Party Congress, you were a Labour Party member for many years, Labour MP for many years, that if Jeremy Corbyn had still been leader of the Labour Party, He's still a member of the Labour Party. A lot of people get confused. He's no longer in the parliamentary Labour Party, but he's still a member of the Labour Party. Repeatedly questioned outside this conference centre yesterday, because the silly fool forgot to get his accreditation request in, refused to point bank condemn the savagery of Hamas. Well, this equivocation by Corbyn uh, is not new. And, you know, the, the equivocation impacted on this country directly. When I last came to this conference in Liverpool, 2018, I, I, had to, I had to have police. I remember. I had to have the police because there were specific threats from Corbynites to me, violent threats, um, and the police were involved. So I came here uh, with police assistance. That's coming to this conference. Thankfully, this is a different world now. And here, I mean, I, I, I've been repeatedly stopped by people, I don't know, young people thanking me for taking a stance against anti-Semitism. People I've never met before in this conference. But his young people is very encouraging. This, this, one of the things we can take some comfort for is the Corbynites are so out on a limb of irrelevance. 
they're out of the Labour Party. Well, and 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 but Labour Cor Corbyn isn't. And I'm going to ask you: should 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 Keir Starmer now stop messing about, stop dithering, and expel this terrible man from the Labour? Party? I, I don't expect Corbyn to, to, to be in the Labour Party much longer. I mean, he's finished. Gone Corbyn, this week. Corbyn, Corbyn is finished in the Labour Party. Um, he's he, he's yesterday. He's an irrelevance. Mm. The Labour Party doesn't want Corbyn, and his equivocation on Hamas says it all. The response of any decent person is to want peace, is to want justice, is to want this brutality to be stopped and condemned. Where was Corbyn saying anything about these hostages? Nothing. I mean, the man, you know, beyond, beyond contempt. But, but the Labour Party now, as with all the main parties in this country, with the government, he stood united. That is a message from Britain. Our political leaders across the spectrum are united. We stand with Israel at this time. We stand with democracy at this time. We're appalled, horrified. We want to see Hamas broken. Indeed we do.